Welcome to RAID Reconstructor. Runtime's RAID Reconstructor will help you recover data from a broken RAID Level 5 array consisting of 3 to 14 drives or a RAID Level 0 striped array consisting of 2 drives. Even if you do not know the RAID parameters such as the drive order, block size, and direction of rotation, RAID Reconstructor will analyze your drives and determine the correct values. You will then be able to create a copy of the reconstructed RAID in an image file or on a physical drive. Once you've created the image, you can use it for further data recovery processing with Runtime's Get Data Back. If you create the image on another physical drive, you can process it with Get Data Back 2, or you might even be able to boot directly from it. RAID Reconstructor is read-only. It will not try to fix your RAID. It will merely create a copy of your RAID to another location. It will collect sector by sector from each single drive involved and write these sectors in the correct order to the designated destination. This process is also called destriping. Because one drive is redundant in RAID 5, it is sufficient to have one less than the original number of drives in the array. RAID Reconstructor can recalculate the original data from the missing drive. For a RAID 0 array, you will need both drives. RAID Reconstructor will recover both hardware and software RAIDs. It will also recover from a broken Windows Dynamic Disk Set. For this tutorial, we're going to reconstruct a RAID 0 set. The first thing you must do is change the RAID type to RAID 0. You will notice the number of drives change to 2 and cannot be changed. If you have more than 2 drives, make a RAID 5 to ensure recovery if later needed. In this tutorial, we're going to use images that are already made. They are from two 4 gig SCSI drives that were set up in a RAID 0. To create image of your drive, click on Tools, Create Single Image File. You will be presented a list of available drives to make images from. You can see the Start button is not available. This is because you have not chosen a destination yet. Once you enter your destination manually or by clicking on the three dots on the right and selecting a designation from there, the start button will become available. Depending on the size of the drive and where you are storing it to will determine the time it takes to make the image. From an Adaptech SCSI controller, it took about 8 minutes apiece to make 4 gig images of the drives we will be using. These files were stored on an internal IDE drive. The multi-file option is there to break the image up into 650 megabyte pieces. If you're writing the image to a FAT drive, be sure to turn this option on, as FAT32 cannot write a single file larger than 4 gigs, and the drive you use will be larger than that. Since we already have our images, we are going to cancel this step. To select a drive or image, right-click on the namespace of the drive. You will be presented with an option of choosing a drive or an image. Remember that your array must be broken in order to use the software. If the array appears as one large drive, then you do not need to use RAID Reconstructor as the array is already intact. You can just scan the drive with our data recovery tool, Get Data Back for NTFS. In this case, we will select an image. You will be presented with a selection box asking you where the image is stored. In this case, it is on our E drive. Choose the first image and double click it or highlight it and select open. Do the same thing for the Drive 2 name box. You will now be presented with a few options. It will ask you for the starting sector of the array. By default, it is set to zero. This is not the correct starting sector for most RAID zeros. We will leave it at zero just to show what happens when you have the wrong starting sector. The next option is the block size. There is no need to modify this in any way since it will be chosen by the software automatically. With the starting sector set to zero, click on Open Drives. This will lock the drive so that the software can use them. You cannot modify the starting sector or add additional drives while the drives are open. You will now see the total sectors available to the RAID. The sectors should equal Disk 1 and Disk 2 sectors added together, provided that the drives are exactly the same size. It will also show you the total size of the array. At this point, we're ready to analyze the array. This will determine the block size, the rotation, and the direction of parity. You will be presented with many more options, including block sizes to probe and the number of sectors to probe. By default, the custom block sizes of 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256 are already entered. You have the ability to add custom block sizes as well. 
We will enter 512 and 8 to our probe as we are not sure of the block sizes. It is unusual to have these block sizes unless you've manually entered them into your RAID when you created it. If you really have a block size of 512, you need to increase the sectors to probe to about 5 million in order for the software to find the correct rotation and block size of the drives. As you add more block sizes and increase the number of sectors to probe, you will also be increasing the time it takes for the analysis to complete. We are ready to analyze these drives with these options. Click Next to start the analysis. Unless you've specified a large amount of sectors to probe, you should see the results very quickly. What the software is doing is taking the drive in the order that you place them in the first step. It is then checking that order against each block size that you've specified. Then it changes the order of the drives and runs those block sizes against those drives again. I have paused the scan to show you exactly what is happening as it moves very quickly. The drives are ranked according to entropy or the possible configuration of the drives. The more configurations, the less likely it is that they're the correct settings. The best entropy also needs to be 20% less than the second entropy to be a good entry. As you can see, the result is not significant. Do not proceed if you get this message. It means something is not right and the data will not be any good. We knew this would happen because we have the incorrect starting sector number. When you look at the results, you will see that the entropy of the first entry is almost the same as the second entry, with the exception of the OS4 text. When you see this OS4 text, it is a sign that you're getting close. Your recommended entry may have an OS4, and in this case, it means that the order of the drive shown is correct. When you scroll down and look at the other OS4s, you will see that they all have the same drive order. Since this result is not correct, press Cancel. We will now need to make changes to get a recommended entry. In order to make changes, you will need to close the drives. So click on Close Drives. We will now need to make a change to the starting sector. Change this number to 63. Once this is done, click on the Open Drives. You will get a message that says that zero is the default for hardware raids. Since we are working with the software raid, this is not the case. Click OK, open the drives, and then click on Analyze. Again, we will need to add 8 and 512 to the block sizes to probe since we do not know what the block size is. Also, change the sectors to probe if needed and click Next. Once the analysis finishes, we will see that we have a recommended entry. You can see that the entropy of 0.02 is 20% less than 0.03. You can also see that the block size is 128 sectors, which is a 64K stripe size. The drive order is drive 1 followed by drive 2 and it clearly states that we have a recommended entry. Go ahead and click finish. We are now at step 3 of the software. In the target area we'll need to put in where we want to store this data. In this case we're going to store it on our eDrive and we're going to call the file dstripedraid.img. Once again, we have the option for a multi-file image. If you're using a FAT drive to store this image on, select this option. Append extra sectors. When this is checked, after copying to an image file, extra sectors are appended to fill up a complete cylinder. This may be necessary to mimic an entire drive for processing and get data back. In this case, we will not need to use this option. We are now ready to copy this de-striped image to its new location. Move the mouse to copy and click on it. As you can see, it will start the copying function. It will show you the total sectors being copied as well as the percentage and the time remaining. The time remaining is dynamic and will change on the fly. Do not use the computer during this time. The software is very CPU and memory intensive. If you open another program, it will just slow down the process. The time remaining will vary on the size of the image that is being created, the drive that it is being copied to. For example, a USB drive will take four hours to create an image that an internal IDE or SATA drive can create in one hour, so do not use USB. There you have it. The image is complete. Look for part two of this tutorial where we scan the image we just made with Get Data Back for NTFS. Once the image is completed, you will see that it says ready. You can now close the software.